Well, I'm a, I'm a visual artist and I've lived in New Westminster for um, most of my adult life. My name is Jill Doyle and uh, was really happy to be invited to be part of this project. I'm donating um, a painting, actually, that has yet to be created. I think the theme for the painting is um, going to be a meadow scene that references Queen's Park where there's been a meadow revitalization project underway for a few years now. I had to think about uh, the space where the painting was going to be and the people that would be viewing it. Not only the residents, but the staff and visitors. And I thought, well, now what's going to make sense for people to look at in this building, in this space, in this context? So, uh, well, I thought of the name Queen's Park Care Center. Queen's Park, what's in Queen's Park that would, you know, sort of twig that visual memory. And uh, I thought, what, you know, it's all about kind of creating a visual metaphor for that people can connect to. So the idea of meadows, uh, meadows have flowers, but usually not cultivated flowers, but wildflowers. And uh, that's an appealing image. It's a universal image and it has kind of connotations of time or the fleetingness of time maybe. And then I thought, uh, then there's butterflies. Again, butterflies carry that beautiful metaphor of metamorphosis, of change. Um, and again, that, that quality of um, a briefness in time that I think is kind of appealing and very universal in terms of, of context. I think everybody um, relates to it, uh, whether you're young or whether you're old. Uh, um, it's kind of broad-based, culturally speaking. So it's not a, a, a tremendously original idea, but it's, um, I'm hoping it's all in the execution. So I, want, I would certainly want the painting to have a, a contemporary feel to it. I, I want it to be uh, vibrant and, and, and visually have a real visual impact on the space where it's going to be. Visually, uh, certainly the space that we're talking about needs some enhancement. And um, the residents who live here uh, need to see imagery, I think, um, that is number one appealing and is easy to understand, easy to relate to, uh, uplifting. I have a lot of experience uh, creating large-scale murals. It's something I hugely enjoy doing. Um, and I've done a lot of collaborative work, uh, usually with children, um, but not always. And it is a huge passion of mine um, in what I call creating art for the community by the community. Um, kind of a grassroots approach to public art. And this is really important, I think, especially in these times when people um, do often feel very disengaged. Art is a way to bring you together. You're creating something collaboratively. Um, and it's often many small parts make up the whole. And that's something I think is hugely valuable. So I bring the expertise, that, other, that idea of gathering up many small parts and creating a whole to a project like this, because this is going to be a fairly large scale project. I did a project in 2000 and it was connected with the uh, Millennium Line for SkyTrain. And um, we called it Fish in the City. And because you can think of rapid transit as being um, like a stream, like a river. It's a river that moves people but a natural kind of imagery that goes with that, um, that children could relate to, is fish. So, um, and plus we're right on the shores of the Fraser River, and the, the new SkyTrain line at that time crossed over several rivers um, in New Westminster, in Burnaby, and in Vancouver. So we wanted to bring awareness around rivers and river habitat as part of this public art project. Um, and it was, it, it was geared for children, um, uh, from grades three to grade eight, and there was over 1,100 children that created original artwork with me in classrooms. And then a selection of their original watercolor paintings of these wonderful, incredibly imaginative fish portraits. Um, we translated them as mosaic tiles, as, as beautifully colored, brilliantly colored porcelain tile mosaics. And they were installed um, uh, collectively, many parts make up the whole, 
um, as a series of ponds in the new Saperton Landing Park. And they're at ground level and they're encased in cement. And they, it, is a, it was a wonderful project. It was so exciting. And on each tile um, was each child's name also engraved um, in the tile work. So that was huge. That was great fun. And that was a true legacy project. Um, and I've done lots of um, murals uh, with children, uh, mostly on the sides of schools, which I think is hugely important because schools are another example of institutional space that is in dire need of kind of visual enhancement. I think that art, public art, is most effective and has the biggest impact when it has context for the people who are looking at it, who are living with it in their environment. I think um, the artist personally needs to reach out to the viewer um, and find a way to connect, to bring imagery that connects to a particular time and place and a particular audience. So that's another reason why this particular project for Queen's Park Hospital really interests me. In my younger years, I used to um, work in care homes in therapeutic art settings. I worked for the Red Cross for years. Um, when they ran th therapeutic arts programs for veterans. And I saw the impact that it made on people's lives to participate in making art. People who never, never considered themselves artists, launching on kind of that creative path. It's wonderful to watch it unfold. That was a legacy project timed with uh, the opening of New Westminster's first middle school. and. Uh, there was a very forward-thinking principal at the time who made sure that the architects designed space for a mural in the exterior facade of the building, and that was brilliant. They actually recessed space in this uh, huge concrete wall that's the exterior of the gym. So there was a natural home for uh, a large mural. And, um, I became involved with that project and uh, it's absolutely one of my favorites because uh, for a number of reasons it was great fun to work with middle school students and it's a dual track school so we needed to um, uh, very much include um, French in our imagery and so that's mm, that was a bit of a challenge and we did it through words we did it through French and English words that um, the students imaginatively portray. They actually took the words, it's hard to describe this, and made the physical shape and size and design of the letters reflect the meaning of the word both in French and English. And we took words around change, growth, all of those kinds of words that fit with the experience of a middle school student and translated them from English to French and they became, so text became part of the mural. It's, it's very sophisticated in its concept and very sophisticated in its execution by the students. So it's still a favorite of mine. And it has a huge impact on the space because you view that mural um, from 8th Avenue and McBride and you're looking across um, the playing fields, so yeah, you can't miss it. <laughs>